Welcome to TheBaseballSwing.com. Joe Colucci here with you, and we're going to talk a little bit about barrel depth, kind of what it means and how you can maybe use it to your advantage. So, full disclosure, I don't use the term barrel depth. I think it's kind of misleading, and let me kind of explain to you why. We have um, Kerry Carpenter pulled up here, so good young player, and he gets what I would call a lot of barrel depth, or as I see it presented out there by some of the other instructors. And the reason I don't really care for the term because I think it's, it's misleading. So for instance here, this is extremely deep in the strike zone, but as you can see, based on the pitch plane and the line coming across his barrel, he's got barrel depth, right? His barrel is in the zone. Um, it is in a, on a crash collision course with the ball. So, right, all good? Not exactly, because his barrel is working down. So if we move forward a little bit, you can see his barrel is well below the, um, the plane of the pitch. If he were super late and hit the ball here, where's this ball going to go? It's going to crash straight into the ground on the same angle as his bat. He makes contact or ball passes un over his bat at this point. He's going to pass over his bat at this point. He's really not going to get on plane with the pitch. I mean, he's even his barrel's a little low here, right? Um, maybe here. I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt, and I'm going to say, okay, maybe he got on plane a little bit before that, as represented by this box. But I'm not so sure. Anyway, he progresses forward, smashes it, and then extends his arms to keep the bat barrel on plane with the pitch. So good job athletically to do that. Not ideal, but look, we're not hit off a tee here, right? You have to be adjustable, you have to be athletic, and you have to understand what's going on. So clearly Carpenter is, you know, trying to hedge his bat and extend those arms out in case he's a bit early, right? No problem. Now, he's out of the zone shortly thereafter, um, way over the pitch plane. Even back in here, I'm saying, you know what, he's knobbing this off the end of the bat. He's out. Um, so best case scenario is I think he enters in this area. Now, if you, you key in on the blur of the bat, it looks like it's kind of moving kind of level, almost even ascending um, at, the, at the same angle as the pitch is descending. All right? And we've covered this in other videos, but those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, this is five degrees of descent coming out of the pitcher's hand. That is the pitch plane. And it is ideal if a player can swing up at that, whatever, four, five, six, seven degrees, uh, to match that pitch plane. It helps them stay on plane with the pitch, you know, for as long as possible. The bottom line is this. This is the best swing I could present of Carpenters after literally hours online trying to find him staying on plane for any duration. Is this box and this length of being on plane acceptable? I think we can do better. Um, it's not god awful. It's not terrible. Uh, but I think the goal should be to do better than that and be on plane with the pitch longer. He, he just simply isn't. And there's a reason why. And it'll come clearer as I kind of review another one of his swings where he's in and out of plane uh, with the pitch almost immediately. It's horrible. Anyway, this is how I prefer it more to look. So we look at um, Corbin Carroll here, right? Now he's got this bat barrel very low. And this is neither here nor there when it comes to being on plane with the pitch. Eventually you have to get this bat barrel low and slotted uh, so you can be on plane with the pitch, meaning you are swinging up relatively at the same angle the pitch is coming down. That's what keeps you in the zone longer. Barrel depth means nothing. So Carroll drops the arms, whatever. He moves forward. And you'll note, at this point, his bat is on plane with the pitch. Okay? It's in the zone. Should he get beat, he's going to hit a line drive the other way because he's planing his bat somewhat this whole time at this descending five or so degrees, right? And again, don't get real picky with this. If you video yourself and you're swinging up at seven, even eight, it's not the end of the world. Um, 
I think you should have the capacity and the ability to really know what angle you're swinging up at. So practice, try to swing flat, level, zero degrees, try and swing up at eight degrees or nine and get a feel for where your sweet spot is. It, sh it should hopefully be even that four, five, six, seven degrees. Anyway, um, he simply turns into the ball. He's still on plane and he's still on plane. He's on plane a super long time. Kerry, Kerry Carpenter is not. Just, it's almost like math, guys. It's right there in front of you. Um, Tatis, same kind of deal. Let's just pull up this pitch plane and then the area I have identified as um, him being on plane. So, again, bat slots, you'll see, unlike uh, Corbin Carroll, when he gets into toe touch or heel plant, Tatis has this bat angle pretty straight up and down, much more abrupt but what he does do and this is fine just drop the barrel start turning into it and you know voila you're going to get into um, a swing mode or structure that allows you to swing up similarly to the descent of the pitch so he's in on plane here that's a little bit below the line that's perfect uh, as he moves forward frame by frame he's still on plane it gives him a longer time to um I guess, uh, stay on plane with the pitch and be successful. This is a longer line, a longer time, you know, representing when he's on plane than Carpenter. This is better than that. It's simple. All right, so I'm going to pull up Carpenter again. He doesn't do quite as good a job here of staying um, in the zone. I think, I don't know which swing came first or whatever. This looks like a more current swing from last year, but anyway. Uh, Carpenter moves in, and let me explain to you guys what, why striving for barrel depth is wrong. To achieve the barrel depth, Carpenter can do a couple of things. He's going to start dropping his back shoulder, and he's going to try and work the bat barrel, whether you call it snapping it or um, rotating it, whatever you want to call it. If this barrel isn't flattening behind him towards the dugout to some extent, you're going to create a steep plane, meaning the bat that goes this way towards the catcher, watch what happens. Again, shoulder working down. That angle gets extremely steep. Okay, and if we pull up those same kind of lines, we really can't here. At this point, he's working down. You can see the blur, right? It's starting to round off, but definitely working down. He's got bat depth. This is why I say it's useless. What if the ball collided with the bat at this point? Again, he's going to hit it straight in the ground. Who cares? Why is this a goal of mine? It is not important. Stop focusing on little tricky terms and stuff that isn't important, right? Anyway, as he goes through with his swing, he is so far below the pitch plane now, he would swing a foot under it, I swear, if this ball, maybe not a foot, but he'd be way under it at this point because his bat barrel is down here. It's not on plane with the pitch. He works it abruptly up to the ball from here. There to there. Catches it with great timing, great athleticism. Not lucky. He's talented. And then he's almost immediately out of the zone. So I can't even draw a box for the time he's in the zone. But what I can do is this. Track the bat. So check this out. Here's where his bat barrel tip is. Okay. So he's here at this point. This is the blur. Barrel's kind of more in this area. This is how far below the pitch plane his bat is. The pitch plane. You can't work down then up and be, you know, as successful as you really can be. So in order to get to this position, noting the little curve the bat does work on somewhat of an arc, in order to get there, you have to abruptly swing up. Unfortunately, now you're abruptly out of the zone because it's going to continue on that path. This is what striving for bat depth, if you don't truly look, you know what you're trying to accomplish, this is what it causes, guys. Okay? You want to be on plane with the pitch, swing on that plane as best you can, and you want to do it as early as you can. This is what you're looking for. Get into that zone with the barrel. Okay? So there's less bat depth. Then we see Kerry Carpenter have, right? Kerry Carpenter's got bat depth, bat depth, you know, to burn. He's got bat depth, you know, 
whatever, a couple, three feet behind him. Corbin Carroll doesn't get that. Carpenter's swing must be different. Corbin Carroll doesn't get very much bat depth at all. But you know what? This ball is by him if it gets back to here. And you know what he's going to do with it? He's going to hit a line drive the other way. If Carpenter allowed the ball to travel way back here where all his great bat depth is, he's going to hit it straight into the ground. I hope you, you understand that and follow that. Furthermore, he's going to stay in the zone longer because he's recognizing that the important part is swinging on an upward tick relatively close to what the pitch is coming down on. You don't see any of that in any of Carpenter's swings. Okay, He swings straight down, then straight up, more or less. Now, again... I'm not looking to bash Carpenter or anything he's working on. I don't know the guy, obviously. I don't, you know, I'm just trying to provide information to you guys based on my understanding of the swing. This can never be as successful, being in the, being steep in and steep out um, and not being on plane with the pitch. It can never be as successful as what you see, you know, many, many greats do, and Corbin Carroll really does very well here. You're just not in the zone long enough swinging like Carpenter to have the maximum amount of success. You are not fulfilling your potential. If you hear the term bat depth, you strive for it by slamming everything straight down towards the ground. Regardless, if, if somebody's telling you this is work the bat barrel, turn the bat barrel rearward towards the catcher, <laughs> it creates a steep, steep plane into the bat. You're, you're not helping yourself. Um, and then, consequently, steep up through it. Anyway, um, hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or thoughts or, or questions, just leave them in the comments. Um, you can also go to thebaseballswing.com if there's something you want to say that you're not comfortable saying in this format. Shoot me an email, fill out the form, whatever. Um, and yeah, that's it for today, guys. Barrel depth. Really understand what getting on plane with a pitch deep in the zone means. It's not as simple as tossing a bat barrel, you know, behind the ball. It, it really isn't. All right. Joe Colucci with the baseballswing.com. Till next time, guys, have a good one.